Am I a woman dreaming I'm a bee? Or a bee dreaming I'm a woman? In the secret world, the distinction between reality and dreams can often blur. Hello, welcome to Answers, a series where I seek to answer the questions raised as we travel through this secret world. Today I want to focus on the odder aspects of the dragon introductory sequence and the Tokyo flashback. This is a follow-up to questions episode 1. If you have not watched that yet, I would recommend you do so first. Also, caution spoilers ahead. From the moment the van drops us off, we are not in the real soul. We are in a dream, a hallucination or a mirage. For proof, all one has to do is wander off the path. Everything goes gray, and we find the city is oddly empty. It's as if we step backstage, we are trespassing, and we are able to see the sound stage for what it truly is. There are no people, not even the monks. The buzzing doesn't leave any honeycombs. Color doesn't exist until we return to the path, regardless of where upon the path we return. I do not believe this is so much an effort to force us onto the path, as it is a sign that this is an artificial construct. This part was never meant to be seen, so the details were never filled in. We are supposed to follow the butterflies to the hotel. Nothing more. When we see our conversation from Jen J. Hoon's perspective, there's a monk standing over our shoulder. A monk that's not there when we look. The name Kumiho Hotel is a clue, but not the way most people think. Kumiho are an evil fox spirit from Korean mythology, similar to the Japanese Kitsune, but far more malevolent. Just like the Japanese cousins, they are known as weavers of illusions and dreams. However, they are not known to give foot massages, and in fact, anyone who lets one get so close would likely be killed. It is far more likely she is a mudang, a sort of a Korean shaman. They stand at the border between dreams and reality, between God and man, and their rites involve ecstatic acts, which are not always sexual, so honestly it really could be a foot massage. However, even if she is a powerful mudang, she would likely not possess the ability to send us into this dream world before we even get to her. She may possess a bound servant, however, and I believe it is from this servant that the Kumiho Hotel gets its name. So while I speculated before that she might be a prisoner, I believe rather she is the warden. So where would this bound illusionist be? In the hotel somewhere? No, it's not Akuma. We know from promotional materials he is half Oni. Not Kumiho. It's not Professor Jin. He had a life before he came here, and while he too is imprisoned, there is nothing of a fox about him. Traditionally, fox spirits in all cultures have something of a fox about them, be it tail, claws, eyes, or just an unusual birthmark. It's not the singer. What about the man at the desk? Traditionally, Kumiho are female, however, he has a very feminine stance. Unusual for a game where the models and animations are so gender-locked. These yellow charms are a specifically Korean variant on the Ofuda. But you may remember, we used to bind Kyongshi. They can be used to bind other spirits, too. But notice the back of his jacket. What is this strange stain here? Does that look like a fox? Maybe it's just me. Regardless, Lady in Red sends us to Tokyo, where we encounter someone else's dream. In the mission back to the beginning, we get to meet Sarah, and we find out that every time a new bee goes through the training process, she flashes back to that horrible day. Essentially, we all invade her dream. The dream, however, is not exactly what happened. We know this because of the filth-evolved hyperparasitoid entity that appears in the intro. Their lore states, Those exposed to the zero-point pathogen in Tokyo received a highly concentrated dose. They have had longer to incubate. Therefore, they couldn't have possibly been around. Because no one had had that high dose of the filth for that long yet. 
Likewise, it is unlikely this boar entity was here originally. It was probably a premonition, as the same entity appears with the exact same attack pattern in the same place on our return trip. After Tokyo, we return to reality, no longer trapped in the Kumiho's illusions. Or do we? There is evidence that we do not, that we are merely in another layer of dream. Promotional material about this district says, the dragon now occupy a dream world of their own. The district of the dragon is fogged, unclear, caught between times or existing outside of time. Soul's psychic fortress has been compromised by dreams of change and renewal. So this hidden district, this forbidden city within Seoul, is likely a dream of its own. But since Agartha connects, it's likely no less real than any other part of reality. Still though, who is dreaming this district into being? Who could be that powerful? Perhaps the child? Or... Well, that's a story for another time. If you enjoyed this, please share it first, then subscribe, and then like it. And watch my other videos on The Secret World. If you did not enjoy this, well, scars to your beautiful.